Do you want a cup of tea now or yes. do you want to wait? No, I'll no, have it now, yeah. OK. Back home, Ricky is trying to find out what happened next to his great-great-grandmother Mary and her children, with the help of his wife, Rita. What's the matter? I'm not sure I will get into this. You need to master this. My age, I'm not bothering I know, now. I know, but, you know, still and all, I'm not here all the time. My mind's not well, just about this, Well, I won't be using it all the time. It? There you go. What are you looking for? I want to find out what happened to Mary and what happened to the kids, where they went, where did they end up? Did they go in the workhouse or the poorhouse or call it what you will? OK. So how do we do that now? We need to look at the census, don't we? I think he died in 1859. She was still alive then, wasn't she? Yeah. Well, let's go to the 1861 census then. Let's put her name in. Mary Tomlinson. Lived in? Liverpool. Give me a child that would have been alive at that time. Richard was the name of my great granddad. I think I'm doing this right, I'm not sure. There she is. That's the one. She'd have been yeah. 85 in 1861. Are they her kids then? One, two, three, three four, five. Four. Yeah, eight and the six kids. Yeah. Elizabeth, her eldest, is 15. Then we've got Richard, who was my great granddad. He's 14. William, Catherine, Thomas and Mary is six. Yeah. Richard was an errand boy. Yeah. Wouldn't be earning much. How was Mary keeping them all together? I don't know. How was she making it pay? I think that says Dryden Street, Municipal Ward of... Scotland. Scotland Ward, wouldn't it? That would have to be towards the dock area. 13 Stuart's building. Well, they didn't live there before. They'd moved up to the Everton area, which was a further away from the dock, but it was slightly, a slightly better area. Hang on, look at this. That's 13 where Mary is. Yeah. I think there was another family living there. Charlie Hackey, a dock labourer. Doesn't that say lodger? Yeah. But his wife? She's obviously tucked them in. Maybe. To say the six kids is seven, Hackett and his wife, eight, nine, and two kids, 11 of them. Thank you, mate. <sighs> right, there'd be no chance of them laying the bedroom tax, would they? <laughs> Bloody hell. 11 of them in the one house. They'd have been on a rebate. I need to find out whether she does well for herself, whether she marries again. She must have been an amazing woman. I'll be looking for you, Mary. I'm coming looking for you. <laughs> Stewart's buildings, where Mary lived in 1861, have been demolished. So Ricky and Liverpool Museum curator, Dr Liz Stewart, are heading to see a similar building nearby. So we're just here. How would you describe this? Is it a tenement? This is the last surviving example of court and cellar dwellings very famous in Liverpool in the 19th century. So you have an alleyway leading into a courtyard which will be shared by a number of families living in these small back-to-back -back houses. So no backyards, no back windows, just a door and a window to the front of the house. Well, the houses must have been pitch black. Honestly, they must have been like walls, must not they? Yeah. This photograph shows court housing. It dates to about 1900, but conditions wouldn't have changed significantly from the 1860s. This could be where we're standing now, actually, couldn't it? No play area for the kids. There's all sorts of filth over the floors there. Shocking. I assume that they would be the toilets. Well, this isn't the original block of toilets, so in Stuart buildings, where your great-great-grandmother lived, there were 16 houses, eight down each side, and probably two privies at the end of the courtyard. So you're talking about 60 people per toilet? Yeah. I've got four toilets in my one house. <laughs> exactly. Crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it must Completely have been horrendous, different. mustn't it? And this document from the 1860s, the borough engineer, describes the toilet conditions. The passage is generally terminated by the privy and ash pit common to all the wretched dwellings, with its liquid filth oozing through their walls. Even when the middens have been filled so as to overflow the court, no one cared to take the responsibility. That's... They must have been walking in human dirt, mustn't they? I find it distressing to know that my great great grandmother Mary lived in conditions like this. God bless us. 
Oh, my goodness me. Does he grow me there? It is, isn't it? A very, very small space. If you think of the house with 11 people in it, you've got a, a shared living room probably on the ground floor and then these two bedrooms above. Dickensian, isn't it? Mm. This is the garret. Perhaps she rented out the better room to be sure of having lodgers, so it could be that all seven of them were, were sleeping in a room like this. She's definitely on a downward spire coming here, didn't she? She'd have felt quite a difference between Everton mm. and Dryden Street. We've got the 1847 Ordnance Survey map. So we've got Dryden Street here, yeah. just off Scotland Road. The Irish Catholic area. Yeah, she's living amongst Catholics as a Protestant in a very densely built up area. So we can see Stuart buildings, this very long, narrow court. Yeah. So many houses crammed into that space. It's a ghetto, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder how she was living. No sort of handouts in them days, was there? In situations where you have a widow not earning an income, there was the outdoor relief, but there were very strict sort of moral conditions for people to be able to claim that. Outdoor relief was financial assistance the parish provided to help keep some of its poorest inhabitants out of the workhouse. Widows like Mary were closely watched to check they sent their children to school didn't drink alcohol and remained chaste. The young ones are listed on the census as scholars, but she couldn't really afford to lose the income of the older ones That's by right. trying to send them to school. A couple of them were seamstresses and a couple of the lads were errand boys. They'd be bringing in, well, mm. maybe two shillings a week amongst the three of them. So gathering the money for the rent, which might be around three or four shillings a week, would be very difficult for her. Yeah, um, they were grafters, love, weren't they? They were, workers, they, they, they were workers, you know. So Mary obviously is very, very proud. She's managed to keep this family with six children out of the workhouse yeah. and hold the family together in, in very difficult circumstances. God knows how long the family has to live in conditions like this, you know? Well, we've looked in the 1871 census and we don't see her in Liverpool at all. Oh, so we don't know what's happened to her really then, do we? Don't know where she's gone. Where do I go from here? Where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I look? Or it's possible that she's died. Likely, isn't it, the condition they've been living in? Well, this is one part of the journey I haven't liked and me. Uh, I'm really sad to find out that Mary Ended up here with her kids. It must have been horrific. The state of the toilets, well, no light, candlelight, damp. Damp of a morning getting up, damp of a night going to bed. Pretty grim. I'm going to plod on and I'm going to find out what happened to her. And, and I just hope that her fortunes take a turn for the better.